What is up today, guys? Got a video today about the glide scope. Got a four step process for using it to make sure you do this correctly if you're using video assisted intubation. So, you know what's next? Cut to the intro. So today I've got the glide scope. I have disposable GVL covers that actually go over top of the camera. This is the glide scope you're most you're probably most used to. This is not the newest version, but it's pretty new. We have a nice size screen over here, and uh, I'm going to show you a quick method and a really a, a, a methodical way of intubating with this. And even if you think, well, it's video assisted, you know, how hard could it be? It can be hard. There's a couple areas that can really hang you up. And this isn't just like intubating with uh, direct laryngoscopy where we have the blade and we see everything and we go straight in. This is a different set of skills. And so you need to treat it that way when you do use it. But it's a great way. And one of the best things about uh, video laryngoscopy uh, for intubation is, is that when I intubate and I go in and find the right spot, everybody in the room can see the tube going through the cords. And that is the number one way we know that that endotracheal tube's in, is watching it go through the cords. There's many other after that, including waveform capnography, chest x-ray, breath sounds, and many other things. Uh, bilateral chest rise, kind of way down the list on that one, but um, watching it go through the cords and having everybody have the opportunity to view and go through the cords is really important. So we probably wouldn't face the monitor that direction, but let me show you a little bit about uh, the equipment that we have. So the glide scope monitors here, to turn it on, of course, is the on off button here. You're gonna see it to start to come on, and once it does come on, you're gonna see the light come on on your camera. So on here is a camera, and it's also a light, and it heats up. What the heat does, it keeps it from fogging when you go down into that really high, humi high humidified area back in the oral pharynx. So it's really important that it does heat up. The second piece that we use is this uh, plastic cover. Of course, these are disposable. And uh, this is a size three. They also make a size four that'll fit this glide scope. This goes in just like this and kind of locks into place. So now it's ready to use. So you can see our monitor here and here is our glide scope ready to go, locked into place uh, with the cover on. A couple of other things that we have that's really important. And you know, when I first started doing a uh, video assisted laryngoscopy, uh, for intubation, I wasn't a big believer in the rigid stylet, and that's what comes with the glide scope, the rigid stylet. So here, here's one. I have a couple other ones, but they come with this, as you can see, this very pronounced curve. And when I do direct laryngoscopy for intubation, I don't put that kind of this kind of curve on my endotracheal tube with my stylet. But this is very specific to work with the glide scope and don't fight it. I'm telling you, do not fight it. <laughs> don't try to straighten it out or bend it more, or do that kind of stuff because if you do it correctly, it's much more of a finesse thing when we're putting when we're doing these intubations than a manhandle muscle something in. You you just you just can't do it that way. You have to finesse it in. And that's what this four part uh, step process is all about. So Let's get started with the four-step method. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the, the laryngoscope camera from our left hand straight down midline uh, the patient. Now, if we were doing standard laryngoscopy, we would start over here on the right side. We would go in, we'd sweep the tongue. Looks real nice and, and, and real easy if you're used to doing that, but this is going to be a little different. We're going to go straight down the center. So step one is we're going to put this in, our patient, and you notice this really stiff angle on here, really hard angle. You want to go down as close as you can to the chest. You're going to go down. You could also start from the side like this and then rotate it in the place. So you could do this, rotate it, 
or you can go straight this way as I can in this patient. But you're going to go in and I'm going to watch as I go back around the corner. Step one is inserting this and keeping your eyes focused here. Not looking anywhere else, watching here until that gets to where it's supposed to be. Step two is to look at the monitor. So now I'm going to look at the monitor and if I see the monitor that I'm looking at, and I'll bring it so you can view it also, I'm going to look at the monitor, I'm going to grab this GVL just like this, like I'm ready for business here. We're going to grab it and I'm going to lift it. So just think of it as lifting soft tissue. Go straight up. This isn't like I'm like cranking back like this or anything like this. Just go straight in and lift up soft tissue. And you see what that does when I go lifting up? Bada bing, you can probably see it from that <laughs> camera there, how big the cords are right here in front of me. So, goes in, it's not always as pretty. Of course, I know that's the esophagus, and bada bing, that's the trachea, and I can actually see, shoot, like six tracheal rings going down, which is always a good sign. So, step one, watch it go around. Step two, once it goes around, you grab it, you look at the screen, and you find the vocal cords. Okay, we're in the right spot. I hold this part. Step three is what most people mess up. Most people want to do this. I want to look at the monitor and try to get this thing to go in down in here. Now I just got really lucky because it went in the right spot, but usually it doesn't. So step three, what you're supposed to do, so step one, eyes here, step two, eyes here, step three, eyes back at the patient. This is our rigid stylet. Remember, this is not going to bend out straight. This is made to be stiff. It has to go in from the side. Don't try this. It may work in some cases, but you need to go in the side. Once you get it back there, you rotate it up so it goes in like this. You rotate it up, and then it's right in the correct position. But notice the position that you're in. If I have, let's say this is our um, glottis, and if I'm putting pressure right here, I'll show you why this doesn't work, and I'm pushing from this end right here, pushing, 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 that's not going in. No matter how much I push it, it's just kind of shooting upward. That's really important once I get to what we call popping the stylet, and popping the stylet is just like this. So we're popping the stylet out from a little bit of the tube. So it started here, we're popping it up here. What that allows is it allows this end to kind of bend and flex and to go inside the trachea or go past the vocal cords. So it's not, it's not like general direct laryngoscopy where you can just watch it, put the, straight through the cords, pull the stylet out, it's done. There's a lot more finesse that goes on when we get to the point of inserting this and getting the tube in because it looks like it's going to be heck you look at it, that's going to be easy right heck you can see it from a mile away drive a truck through there put a garden hose in there anything like that but you have to have this method this popping method once i get it to the right part so the popping method is i just pop this up it makes this end kind of soft and bendy and so you see how the stylet ends actually right there makes this soft and bendy and so that can come out and the stylet has to come out and go towards the chest if I can get it out. So, <clears throat> let me show you how this works. So, step one, watch the mouth, insert this around the corner. Step two, look at the monitor. Step three, look back at the mouth with our tube ready. We're going to go into the side. I'm still watching the mouth, still watching the mouth, still watching the mouth. Okay, step three is done. Step four is back at the monitor again. I don't grab my tube like this. I don't really grab it like this. You grab it and you put your thumb on this piece right here. And I like to think of this as kind of like a joystick. If you need to move the tube, you're going to press this way or you're going to press this way. You're going to turn your tube. Watch what it does to the end of the tube. Let me show you. When I hit this, it turns it. Hit this, it turns it. So. I am manipulating this thing back and forth just like a joystick and that's how it goes in. It's going to feel like you're low and you're going to want, you're going to be sitting down here and be like, I want to go like this and get it to go around the corner. It won't do that. 
flex it one of these ways until you can get it to go in, pop it and slide it in. So <clears throat> back at it. We have it. We're going to go back in. We're done with step three. Step four is we look back at the monitor. Right now on the monitor, I don't see a whole lot. I see a big cuff in my way. I'm going to lift up. My endotracheal tube right now is going down into the stomach. And so I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to push my thumb to the right, get that to pass, and it will get to this point right here. Now I can usually push, push a lot right here, and it's not going anywhere, right? It's stuck at the cords, stuck at the cords. This is when you should be popping it. You don't want to smash their, their uh, posterior glottal area. So you go in this way, and what you're going to do is you're going to have to pop it at this point. So I get to the cords, the, the tip is inserted, I pop this out, I advance, pop, advance. I can watch that go in, pull this out, and notice how I pull this out, it goes towards the chest. And the tracheal tube is in and absolutely buried, way too deep. So, definitely the right main stem. So, I will withdraw about 24 or so, but this is something pretty cool. So, I like to get a little bit like. I get slightly overconfident from time to time, which I need to take them back, to, take, take them back down a couple notches. But one kind of thing is cool is you're like, uh, and let's say somebody in the room is like, um, the code recorder, what is it? Uh, it's 24 at the gum line and uh, 11 at the cords. So you can actually look down to see how deep it is at the cords. And that's the real deal. So you can actually see how deep it is at the cords. The great thing about this is everybody in the room can see my endotracheal tube is in the right spot. So I've got a lot of other verification methods, but you can see that it's in the right spot and everybody else does. They feel confident in your endotracheal tube. Just a replay of the four step method in um, maybe three quarter speed. Number one, insert glide scope, look at the mouth, now, number two, look at the monitor, see the cords. Number three, insert the tube, rotate around the corner, still looking here, look back at the monitor for number four, I'm going to adjust it, I'm going to pop it, and insert it. Any question, I can go back in and look, it's in the right spot, so I can secure it that way. So if anybody questions the tube is in, sometimes it's good just to show everybody. If it's a really hard intubation, just to show them that it's in the right spot. So let's go at full speed. So you could do this during compressions also if you have the ability to do that. So we're going to go in, we're going to view it, we're going to go in right here, go around the corner. I'm going to see it in the right spot. I'm going to insert, of course, this is in a mannequin, so it's no, no mucus and whatnot. And then we're going to secure this in the tracheal tube because it is in the right spot. So. I hope this video helped you today, gave you a couple extra hints. Make sure you comment below and practice with your glide scope before you use it on a patient. But it's a great thing to use, especially for somebody in a C collar, somebody has any neck issues. And if you just want to do a real quick video assisted intubation, uh, you can also video this so you can do a record button. The other nice thing about this is that um, when you do these video assisted intubations, um, you have to know how this works. Don't just think because it's video assist it's going to be easy because it is a different process. Practice it 10 times on a simulator and you'll get the feel for it. It's a lot different than a standard intubation. So, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.